The goal behind this video is to show you how projectile motion problems can be solved by applying some of the kinematic equations of accelerated motion. This video will deal with an example of a projectile being launched from some height at some angle. Now this results in a pretty complex problem. So I want to go over a few key points quickly that you'll use throughout this example. For the purposes of this example, and most problems in secondary school physics, a projectile is defined as an object that is only acted on by the force of gravity in the y direction. Most problems in secondary school ignore air resistance, so we're not going to consider that here. A counterintuitive property of projectiles is that the time it takes for the horizontal and vertical components of a projectile's trajectory are equal. If you picture dropping a ball and throwing a ball horizontally, those two balls will hit the ground at the same time. Now, I could spend all my time and money designing the ultimate experiment to prove this to you, but Mythbusters already did it, and honestly, it's super cool, so you'll have to check that out. I'll link the video in the description. Lastly, projectiles do not experience acceleration in the x direction. This is just another way of saying they do not speed up or slow down in the x direction. Again, this is another counterintuitive property. People seem to think that because the object is being pulled to the ground, it's slowing down. Again, the Mythbusters debunk this myth better than I ever could. At the risk of scaring you off, here are a few relevant equations that you might use when approaching a projectile motion problem. On the right we have the five equations of accelerated motion, and I've derived where these equations come from in a two-part video series that I'll link here. On the left you've got the quadratic formula, and if you've got any experience with secondary school math you've probably seen this thing before. This formula will help us solve for the x-intercepts of a quadratic, and when you launch a projectile at some angle, the trajectory that's produced can be modeled using a quadratic. So if we find the x-intercepts of this parabola, we can determine quantities such as how long a projectile is in the air for, or how far a projectile travels before hitting the ground. Let's look at an example. This is the situation that we're being faced with. Aquaman's launching himself at 6.4 meters per second at an angle of 35 degrees. Now, one of the things we can do with projectile motion is we can take a trajectory and we can break this into two vector components. If we're able to analyze our horizontal and our vertical motion, we can apply these ideas of projectiles. We know gravity is the only force acting on the projectile in the downward direction, and projectiles do not accelerate in the horizontal direction, as well as time being the same for horizontal and vertical components. So we're able to break this vector into two components. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is solve for this initial velocity component in the x direction. And in order to do that, I have to use my understanding of trigonometry. This is our adjacent side. This is our hypotenuse. Side. The trig ratio relating the adjacent to the hypotenuse would be cosine. So I can solve for Vix simply by multiplying 6.4 up to the other side. And if I just rewrite it in this way, I've got a nice expression for the horizontal velocity component for my velocity vector. I'm going to do the same thing solving for Viy. So this time, looking at this angle, I've got the opposite side and I've got the hypotenuse again. The opposite and the hypotenuse side are related using the sine ratio. Using a similar process, I can solve for Viy. So I've now got two velocity components, one for the horizontal, one for the vertical direction. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to break down what I'm given. I'm being given velocity in both directions here. These are the two velocity components that I just figured out. And I know my acceleration in the x direction. Remember, if we think back to one of the key points, projectiles do not experience acceleration in the x direction. So I'm just going to say I have zero acceleration in the x direction. I do know that I'm being acted on by the force of gravity in the downward direction. So I'm going to say that's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Looking at displacement, I know I'm going to be traveling 18 meters in the downward direction. So if I assume downward is negative, I can just put negative 18 for my displacement in the y direction. We're actually being asked to find our displacement in the x direction. So this is just an analysis of what I'm given and what I'm required to find. Okay, so at this point, we haven't really done much. We've just sort of set up the problem. The next thing we need to do is select a strategy using the tools available to us. So you'll note that we're missing a value for time. This is something that we need because we know that the time it takes for our horizontal and our vertical components is going to be the same. So no matter how we swing this, we have to solve for time. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the y direction because I know the most information about the y direction. You can see here I've only got two pieces of x information and I've got three pieces of information in the y direction. Okay, now I can do this by using this kinematic equation relating v, a, d, and t. If you're thinking, how did you pick that equation? Looking at my list of equations here, you can see that this equation is the one that has all the variables that I need. All right, so I'm going to simply substitute values for my variables into my equation. You can see here I'm just keeping my viy. I haven't simplified that. Simplifying everything here will result in this line here. This is definitely going to be a quadratic. In order to solve for time, what I have to do is use the quadratic formula. If you have some experience with the quadratic formula, this isn't going to be that bad. If you 
don't have experience with the quadratic formula, this can be a little tricky. A large percentage of this is going to be done on your calculator. You're going to end up with two answers. One of your answers will be negative. We're going to throw that negative one in the garbage because we're not time traveling here. But you can see I've solved for time. I know that this is the time in the vertical direction. And based off of one of the key points at the beginning, I know that the time it takes for the horizontal and vertical motion to happen is the same. So I can use this T to solve for D in the X direction. Going back to what I'm given, I now have enough information that I can use my VIX, my AX, my T here to solve for DX. I'm going to use the same formula as I used before. This time I'm going to break it down into the X direction. Okay, so substituting everything that I'm given, you can see here I can easily solve for dx. I get 12.21 and I can conclude that Aquaman's going to travel 12.21 meters in the forward direction before hitting the ocean. Okay, so definitely a long kind of complicated process, a lot of steps, but if you have an understanding of trigonometry, quadratics, and if you've solved a kinematic problem before, it's really not that complex. It's not the same every time. You do have to think about, you know, sort of what you have and what you need. That's why I always sort of write out my givens and my required. I do encourage you to do that just to help you plot out your plan for the rest of the problem.